Today, I want to break down the one gift that you should be giving everyone this year. Well, that's right, folks. The one gift that I think can hit almost any person on your gift list or for yourself is the Swiss Army Tinker. Now, I've had several months with this multi-tool at this point, and there's a couple reasons why I feel this way that I'm going to get into today. But right out of the gate, first off, it hits a budget-friendly price at about $22. There's lots of color combinations out there. So you're getting a Swiss Army knife, and you know the name just alone, boom, you just it's synonymous, synonymous with outdoor activity, with everyday carry options, with being prepared, Boy Scouts, camping, hiking, backpacking, you name it, hunting. Swiss Army knives have been in some format being used in those areas for decades and decades. So there's just a name brand aspect to it for, again, that really budget-friendly price, the color different combinations that they often offer, and all the tools. You get so much for that really budget-friendly price of, uh, you know, like 22 bucks. So you're getting two blades, you're getting a bottle cap opener, uh, a can opener, two different types of flatheads, a Phillips head, and an all in toothpick and tweezers, all at under three ounces. It's really sleek, it's really slim, it's lightweight, and it's not intimidating either. You can bust this little bad boy out almost anywhere worldwide and no one's gonna give you a second thought, but you do have so many capabilities and so many tools. And unless you feel absolutely like you must have pliers on your multi-tool, this can basically do anything this can do or most multi-tools can do for the average everyday user, regardless if they're on a hiking or backpacking trip, camping, or just around the home. Now there's an extra special place in my heart because I believe this was the very first Swiss Army knife and very first knife that I ever got as a gift from my dad when I was about nine years old. My brother got one as well and we loved it. We fell in love with it. It was a classic red one since that decades ago. It's been lost and moving and different things like that. So I don't have my original, but from all the tools that I remember, this was the tool that my dad got me. So there's nostalgic tied to this particular tinker as well. But as I have used this on a regular basis, I've really fallen back in love with Swiss Army knives because there was a while there where I wasn't really using them. I was like, I must have pliers. And yes, pliers are very vital. They're very important. I usually have some form of multi-tool with pliers, either in my everyday carry bag or somewhere close by. But what I discovered, particularly with the Tinker, is that you're getting a knife that and a tool that has the capability to really do everything that the average user is gonna need, regardless if you're snowboarding, regardless if you're snowshoeing, regardless if you're biking, um, you're you know around the campsite, like I've said. So uh, some of the things that I've noticed is that the blade, particularly the larger blade, is phenomenal for slicing, guys. For going through cardboard and packaging, the way they've designed the tip, the thin blade with the full flat grind is wicked for those type of tasks and outperformed even most of my other Leatherman multi-tools that I have in slicing capability. So uh, for the need to do everyday carry, you know, around town type of tasks and even um, small food prep, it is one of the best shaped blades around for those general utility tasks when you want a smaller compact blade. Now, the drawback is twofold. One, it doesn't lock. And <laughs> within about two hours of that first Christmas that I got the Tinker, I had accidentally, you know, not really knowing how to use a knife yet properly, collapsed it on my hand. Nick, my hand was crying, bleeding. And my, my brother followed suit in about 30 minutes of his own mistake, having it collapse on him just because we didn't know how to use a, the, the blade. If you know at all how to use a knife in any way, shape, or form uh, and have had... 10 minutes of training on how to, to use a pocket knife ever, then uh, th I've never seen an area where I wish I had the locking mechanism. Now, don't get me wrong. I love locking me mechanisms. If I have a choice, I prefer them. But it's not a deal killer for me. And in, for a, a long time, I felt like it was. I felt like, ah, it doesn't have a lock. So, uh, But let's get real. With most of the tasks you're ever going to do with this size of a tool, do you really need it? And as long as you're putting pressure the right way and you're not doing some sort of silly like bow drill, putting weird pressure on it like type of cut, why would you ever be concerned that it's going to fail on you? Now, the second thing is you get that smaller compact blade. So for even more precision cutting, 
carving and whittling particularly i think it does help with some of those smaller things or smaller packaging that maybe you don't want to you have to put pressure on to pierce but you're concerned you might puncture um uh, things inside because of how short the blade is you're less likely to do that and then obviously you've got your two flat heads which definitely get the job done uh, and then because this has the phillips head it really is able to hit any type of screw from more compact to very large screws that you may ever encounter just putting a kid's you know play set together on christmas morning uh to you know working on the things around the bike uh having to tighten up a screw that fell loose on your you know office chair at the office whatever it may be they get the job done bottle lifter so that you can pop off those lids on the cold cool beverages can opener most cans in this day and age have the you know pop top but it's nice to have that peace of mind knowing that if I absolutely had to and for whatever reason the can that I'm working with doesn't have the pop lid I can cut this thing open and then finally in all I don't know about you guys but there have been a few times in my life where uh, I sit there and I'm literally hunting all over the house trying to find an all to punch a hole in particularly for me it's usually like a leather belt if I'm adjusting the belt size and maybe I've lost a little bit of weight or I misjudged the length of it and you know I need to shorten it up a little bit and punch a new hole uh, so it's really nice to have that all feature I don't do any like sort of sewing with it or anything like that but it's it's a really good nice you know feature to have and then your tweezers and your you know toothpick are always a good bonus as well. Guys, that's why after I have used this, this actually now floats in my little compact survival kit. Got this one from VanQuest. And this has everything I would need to either go on a light day hike or just carry over to the office, a power charger, a little sharpener, uh, you know, a headlamp. Uh, a lighter some spare batteries some cash you know that type of stuff this little guy fits in there perfectly it's everything that i would really need and run into short of having to like rewire a car maybe or something like that and even this has wire strippers and with the little blade i could do more marring tasks with the little knife if i needed to strip wire and things like that and then the larger blade to save for either that carving or cutting and those type of things now the other aspect as well is that Swiss Army knives aren't necessarily the best edge retention blades. Mine came with a good edge on it, but it's a stainless steel. It's either 440A or a lower form of Sandvik. I can't remember which one, uh, but uh, you know it'll dull pretty quick on you, but it's very easy to resharpen, and it's such a, a steel that it was very rust resistant, so in high humid environments, lots of snowy winter conditions, you don't have to worry about it picking up a lot of rust. Now, one quick little pro tip that I've discovered is twofold, and it has to do with the little key ring because that's another drawback to the design no pocket clip you know you either have to attach it to a key ring which with the weight again under three ounces and how slim and compact the tool is at about three and a half inches overall you can attach this and throw it on your keychain and you don't really notice that it's there particularly if you have kind of a lighter keychain so that's a really good bonus that you could honestly just keep this on a key ring and for a lot of people that you may gift it to they might actually do that or it fits really nicely in a front um, coin pocket of a pair of pants so i like that but with this key ring you can either go out and usually for about eight to ten dollars you can get a little pocket clip that attaches to the key ring so then you can carry it more like a, a standard pocket knife and pull it out and you'll use it regularly or you can also do what i've done which are these little night eyes gear ties and these guys are these little rubberized twist ties basically that are very grippy and what i've found is if i throw a decent size one on here it will usually grip to the inner cloth of my pocket and it's very difficult for it to slide out or fall out so it helps with a little bit of extra grip if you just want to throw it in a pocket uh, it's not foolproof it's not like a pocket clip but it definitely helps keep it retained inside the pocket because of the rubberized material grips and kind of gets wrapped around inside the pocket a little bit and keeps it from just wanting to slide out because the handle material is polymer and it is very slick which can be a little bit of a drawback sometimes and i want to hear from you guys is do you have any ideas on how i could maybe upgrade the handle scales i don't know i'm just getting into swiss army knives again there might be you know like aftermarket micarta that you could do or wood or something like that so i think that'd be fun um otherwise you could just do a little tiny batch of um, like grip tape or you know like hockey tape to kind of give you a little bit of texture there are some ideas for you you could even do like a little heat gun and do little pock marks just to give you a little extra 
grip if you would want to. So folks, that's why I believe the Swiss Army Tinker is one of the best gifts to give somebody any time of year or just to gift yourself. So I hope that this uh, video is not only just giving you the ideas, but showing you what this tool can do, the capabilities, maybe some of its limitations. And it has definitely rekindled my interest. I have another Swiss Army knife I'm currently working on. I'm starting to look at Swiss Army knives a lot more as I've seen this, is, this knife's potential and just fun factor. And as my children start to grow, how it may fit into some of their needs down the line. So it, it's a great little tool, the Tinker in particular, but also Swiss Army knives. I'm going to begin to do a little bit more on the viewing and reviewing side and using side of them because of this little tool rekindling my interest and the value that it has for such a low price point. I, I, I love it. So guys, thanks so much for checking us out today. Uh, please subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. I invite you to hit that other video, watch along, see other videos that we've made in the past. So, uh, hit that subscription button again and uh, stay tuned for the next video. It's coming up real soon. You can see us on Instagram, Facebook, and all the other social media as well and follow along there. We're growing all the time, posting up content all the time. Finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.